if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome every one of us um, to this um, special service. Um, it's called a discovery service. It's a time for uh, discipling the saints. I believe one of the strong needs of the church of this age is discipleship. Um, taught in the ways of the Lord and share the principles of the kingdom that we may uh, live there, thereby. I believe we are going to bring the kingdom of God on the, on, uh, upon the face of the earth. A vital need in this time is for Christians in all walks of life to imbibe Christian culture, Christian values, and bring those values into all the fields of their influence, in family life, in career, in business, in relationships, ethics on every level shaped by Christian values and virtues can make the society a better place and by so doing we'll become the salt of the earth and the light of the world so welcome to discovery service a time for bringing uh, a, I mean for that discovery of the Lord and discovery of God's purpose for our lives and we trust God for a refreshing time a time of instruction, revelation, direction, and correction uh, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto good works. Hallelujah. Uh, without much ado, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you for the liberty of the Spirit. We thank you for the various experiences of the people connecting with us on live streaming and even here present the various experiences in the course of the day we thank you father because you have been our help and guide your mercies are renewed towards us every morning and great is your faithfulness lord we ask of you tonight as we look into your word we ask for insight as many as connect with these on uh, live streaming on the various platforms and who will watch this hereafter we ask for insight we ask for revelation we ask for instruction we ask for correction uh, we ask that you inscribe your eternal truths on the tables of our spirits and give us the courage for corresponding action we trust you to make us better saints make an impact in the various fields of our lives and bring in your kingdom upon the face of the earth. We thank you for answered prayers because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight I'd like to share on the subject I call turning captivities. Turning captivities. And I'd like to take my text from Psalm 68. The book of the Psalms. In Psalm 68, I'd like to read from verse 18 to verse 20. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Psalm 68, from verse 18 to verse 20. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts amongst men. Actually, when you check other translations you get a clearer picture of that sentence you have received gifts amongst men or better still you have received gifts for men even the new king james says even from the rebellious but actually when you check other translations it brings clarity it means actually even for the rebellious that is those who hitherto have even been rebels the gifts of God that God took from um, captivities are available to all 
including those who have lived the re, you know, who have lived rebellious lives so making that clearer you have received gifts for men even for the rebellious also that the lord god might dwell amongst us or dwell there blessed be the lord who daily loads us with benefits the benefit of salvation the benefit of the joy unspeakable and full of glory the benefit of divine direction the benefit of divine protection divine preservation blessed be god who loads us with who daily loads us with benefits the god of our salvation sailor our god is the god of salvation and to god the lord belong escapes from death there are situations people are captured in that is meant to terminate their lives there are situations people are captured in that until their end, lives are brought into an unjust end those captivities will not be terminated but the psalmist is bringing to our attention here that our, god, that our god has ascended on high he has led a train of captives people who are captured by sin captured by shame captured by generational influences of darkness captured by ungodly habits mental lockdown some people can never imagine that their lives can be better off socially better materially better physically better maritally better so when jesus ascended this psalm was quoted by the by paul in his letter to the ephesian christians in ephesians chapter 4 we read from about verse 7 it talks about how he who ascended was the one who first of all descended to the lowest parts of the earth and then he ascended that he might feel all things so the psalmist here is saying he said when he ascended ascended on high that is according to matthew chapter 27 when jesus rose from the dead as the first begotten from the dead he led so many righteous captives in that train to heaven that's why jesus became the first born amongst the dead and so here he said he has ascended on he, he said here excuse me you have ascended on high you have led captivity captive that is whatever captured people captured single people beautiful people yet captured by the limitations of this life intelligent people yet captured in by limitations of life i i have who is still alive he's in his 80s now i have a maternal uncle who i was told when he was when he was very young he was the being first in his class was not subject to contest it was a clear thing that this guy was always coming first and then my maternal uh, grand mm, my maternal grandfather that's my mom's dad got on to marrying another wife and so this other wife probably saw the beauty and the grace and the the the, the, the unusual cerebral ability of this young boy and decided to do some funny diabolical things on the young boy and a boy who was consistently coming first <laughs> shot from being first plummeted to becoming consistently last until he had to be pulled out of school so these are real situations people who are captured by vices captured by evil captured by satanic lockdown through habits through drinking habits through sexual habits sexual ab addiction but here he said when jesus ascended on high he led captivity captive that is whatever captured the people he held such things bound and then he led a train of captives into his ascension in glory and then he went on to say he received gifts so that people will no longer remain at the social limitations of their captivities he received gifts salvation gifts uh, favor gifts angelic support he received gifts for men he said even for the rebellious also so people who find themselves uh, who have lived a life of rebellion rebellion rebellious towards parents rebellious towards institutions rebellious towards um, teachers what jesus did is all encompassing what jesus did excuse me is all encompassing he led captivity captive he received gifts for men 
even for the rebellious also he said that the lord our god may dwell amongst us blessed be god who daily loads us with benefits even the god of our salvation hallelujah now having said that i like us to understand this here tonight that people need to know irres maybe you watching this uh, um, um connecting with this service here tonight maybe someone who is connected to you could be a sibling could be a parent could be an uncle could be an auntie could be a nephew or niece could be a colleague at work could be an associate could be a neighbor there are people in all manner of captivities in life today but you see people need to know the announcement needs to be made blow the trumpet in zion sound an alarm upon my holy hill prophet joel said people need to know that they can be free of whatever form of captivity they find themselves in no matter the duration of those captivities no matter the magnitude of the captivity no matter the intensity of the captivity no matter the devastation the, the, the effect of such in captivity and the devastation it has brought into lives, into relationships, into homes, no matter the cause or the root cause of such captivities, people need to know who find themselves in one form of captivity or the other, people need to know that they can be free. If I may say here as I get on with this tonight, captivity can be regarded as a state or period of being held, imprisoned, enslaved, or confined. Do you know in our nation we have such a, a peculiar situation with the prison system in our nation? You can find people in detention, you can find people in prison who have not even been prosecuted, awaiting trial for 20 years. I read sometimes ago a case of a man who awaited trial for 24 years. <laughs> That's a vital chunk of his life, locked away, not even prosecuted as guilty, not guilty until so determined, yet awaited trial in prison for 24 years so but that's a physical imprisonment there are people walking free who are mentally locked down there are people walking free intelligent people who are locked down economically locked down socially locked down by one evil habit or the other but we need to recognize here tonight that people can be free it's the price over the past few weeks we've underscored to us is the price jesus paid is the reason why he came no matter the form of captivity jesus came to pay the price that people may be free of their captivity so captivity is the state or period of being held imprisoned enslaved or confined also in my own words here captivity is to find oneself in any form of unpalatable and undesirable yet but yet sustained you don't like what you are going through you don't like what, what you have been through, what your family members are going through, yet the limitation is sustained. The limitation is still intact. But sustained and limiting situation or condition. So captivity could be in several areas of life. Some people find their captivity in their marriages. They were free until they said, uh, 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 with this ring I, I deal with. And they found out within the bound, within the environment of their marriage, it's like they've entered into a form of captivity. Some find their captivity in the, in the course of parenting. Some find their captivity in the form of their career. They're working hard. They're intelligent. They're highly spoken of. But it amounts to nothing. There is a sustained, there is a deliberate and sustained limiting environment around such people's lives some people are going through economic captivity some it's in their health in their bodies for some it's on their jobs they're just not able to break through a particular ceiling in their lives not for lack of competence but just because there there is a form of captivity about their lives so tonight i'd like us to get quickly into addressing these captivities jesus having paid the price jesus having shed his blood no matter the requirement the demand to set captives free jesus did it all jesus paid the price and so what can i do 
to enter into the liberty wherewith Christ sets men free. What can I do to, be, um, to come out of my captivity? Someone is asking that question here tonight. What can I do to come out? I notice there is a captivity about my life. Certain limitations in certain areas of my life. Some areas are working well, but it seems some areas, no matter the effort, no matter the duration, there seems to be a ceiling. That seems to be a plateau. There seems to be a limiting condition, limiting influence, limiting circumstances and conditions. And I'd like you to know here, friends, tonight, you can be free. And may God set you free indeed in the precious name of Jesus. All right, so here... I want to deal with a dimension of coming out of captivity. I call these keys out of captivity. And here tonight, I want to deal with something that may on surface value, may not necessarily look spiritual or sound spiritual. But God uses, God orchestrates such avenues to turn people's captivity in several areas not necessarily all areas but in several areas of their lives and you see here one key to turning around captivity i want to address here tonight is what i call recommendation recommendation it is not in every case that someone who finds himself or herself in some form of captivity will, will require spiritual operations spiritual dynamics you get on a mountain and begin to pray and to fast. Those things as good as they are. We may touch some of that here tonight. But you see, it is not in all situations that praying and fasting is the absolute master key to unlocking captivities. Sometimes you just need someone to recommend you. Sometimes it may even be a stranger recommending you. Sometimes it may be a neighbor. Sometimes it may be a work colleague. Sometimes it may be someone who has being a recipient of one good virtue, one good quality, one good skill about your life or the other. So tonight, I want to address particularly here, recommendation. Sometimes what is simply required is just for someone to recommend you or your, I mean, or your, uh, uh, to recommend you and you'll find that your captivity just expires just like that. Now, but I would like us to understand this here. If you are going to position yourself in a place of recommendation, where people can recommend you, where uh, 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 people who, I mean, uh, I've not spent so much time with you, but they, but they receive certain things of your life. If you will be recommended at any level to turn some forms of captivity, you must have armed yourself, equipped yourself, with certain levels of competence and skill. What can you do? What are you proficient in? What do you have mastery over? If you are going to be recommended to the king, what will be spoken about you? So it's not enough to pray and fast. If you pray and fast and you lack competence, you lack a skill or skill set, no matter the praying and fasting, there might be nothing to be spoken about you to kings or captains of industry. So as we talk about recommendation here tonight, I'd like to underscore the importance that you to come with such recommendation must be what I call proven skill. Something that you are not just at the mediocre level, you are not just at the raw level of it, you have refined the skill. You have refined your competence to such a level that people can talk about it and people can recommend it in quarters that it may be highly sought for and bring about exaltation and turning of captivities. Let me begin to engage scriptures here tonight and let's look at the classic case of a young man by the name of joseph we've mentioned a lot about joseph in recent times but you see here i would still like to delve into joseph joseph i would like to say was skilled and competent with dreams and their interpretation but he could have lived his whole life in obscurity yes competent Yes, endowed with uncommon skills, with dreams and uh, interpretation of dreams and application of dreams. But you know, those gifts and skills were not enough for his elevation. 
He needed somewhere, someone somewhere along the line to recommend him to Pharaoh in Egypt. Let's see this quickly here. Genesis chapter 41. I'd like to read Genesis chapter 41. I read verse 1 and then I jump because of time to read from verse 8 to verse 16. You know, that passage essentially captures the dreams of Pharaoh, the king in Egypt. Genesis chapter 41 from verse 1. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, he stood by the river. That is in that dream, he saw himself standing by the river. And it's easy to relate the river to Egypt because the longest river in Africa and the most famous river in Africa is the Nile River. And the Nile River like skirts around the nation of Egypt. And so he said he saw himself and he stood by the river. So that was within his constituency of influence. Let's jump to verse 8 because of time. We know the details of the dream. He saw um, seven fat cows, seven lean cows. He saw seven um, fat sheep and then seven lean sheep and all of that. But now let's see from verse 8. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams. But there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day when Pharaoh was angry with his servants, cabinet ministers, and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief butler and chief baker, we each had a dream in one night. He and I, that is the chief butler and the chief baker, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and he interpreted our dreams to us, to each man. He interpreted according to his own dream, and it came to pass just as he interpreted for us. So it happened. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him, that is the chief baker. And what did the king do? On hearing that recommendation, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly, that is in a haste, out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret. But I've had it said of you, recommendation again, I've had it said of you that you can understand the dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace so you see here how a seemingly casual recommendation joseph had been through phases in life son of the noble to becoming i mean finding himself in the waterless pit into egypt in potiphar's house in the prison house but you see one moment of recommendation and his accurate response with skill and competence turned the narrative of his story forever 13 years of captivity from 17 he had a dream she had with his brothers and she had with his father that brought him captivity through treachery and being sold into slavery captivity from the age of 17 at the age of 30 he was recommended to the foremost leader in a foreign land and that turned his captivity around what turned around the captivity of joseph recommendation Let's move a little bit further here. And then I'd like us to also see about David. You know, David had just been anointed in the midst of his brothers, anointed to be the next king over the nation of Israel. But naturally speaking, physically speaking, on the throne of Israel, the throne was not vacant. There was a king who was still sitting and functioning from that throne by the name of Saul. But there was a shift in the realm of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord came from that anointing service upon David. In the same moment, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It was a shift in the spirit. It was like the spirit of liberty came upon David. And now the spirit of captivity, bondage, came upon Saul. And so when the servants in the cabinet of Saul saw the condition of their leader and king, they started to ask recommendations for one level of ability. Let's see that here. They looked for one level of competence, skill, they got six. First Samuel chapter 16, the king was troubled by an evil spirit and he needed help from his captivity. 
David, a man of proven competence, was recommended to handle the situation with the king. Let's see. First Samuel chapter 16. I'd like to read from verse 14 to verse 19. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him, worried him, put him in captivity, in bondage. And Saul's servants said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man look at the recommendation who is a skillful player on the harp and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from god is upon you and you shall be well so saul said to his servants provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me then one of the servants answered and said look i have seen that his recommendation has worked there look i have seen a son of jesse the bethlehemite who is number one skillful in playing playing what the harp number two a mighty man of velo number three a man or i mean a, a a man of war number four prudent in speech he doesn't speak anyhow number five a handsome man good looking good in appearance number six and this is the crowning beauty of recommendation and the lord is with him and look at the response to the recommendation therefore saul sent messengers to jesse that's the father of david and said send me your son david who is with the sheep so i'm showing us here on a first level how recommendation can turn around captivities and we know from time to time david will minister to the king saul and his captivity of that satanic bondage demonic influence will just leave him for that moment so you will see here how recommendation uh, recommendation has turned people's captivities around also i'd like us to understand here many people have had their situations and conditions turned around in different societies simply because someone recommended them to people of influence in the society you know jesus his early disciples came to him because jesus was recommended to them nathaniel came because jesus was recommended and, and um, peter came because his brother andrew recommended jesus so you see amongst those early disciples how jesus was recommended to them look at paul also when paul i mean came in to the midst of the disciples in jerusalem all the leaders all the people they were running away from him until one man a son of consolation a son of encouragement by the name Barnabas recommended Saul spoke very highly of Saul who became poor and that was when they received him and then the churches had rest and then again a few years later he went to the new church that was doing great things in Antioch saw the things they were doing knew the competence of Saul who had become poor and recommended Paul to that Antioch church and he became a stalwart. He became a, a, a juggernaut of a leader in that Antioch church. I'm saying to us here, I'm bringing to attention the power of recommendation. Now, the question I'd like to put to you here, in case you find yourself in one form of captivity, maybe on your job, maybe in your economic level, maybe at your level of living, maybe in your destiny. The question is, what are you competent with? What skill do you have? if someone will recommend you they will, in when uh, maybe in the generation of my parents or maybe earlier on in my time and um, they will ask you what school did you attend what school did you go to what qualifications do you have but you see now the degree might matter nothing the certificate you have might mean next to nothing compared to the question you are likely to be asked now is what can you do so I ask the question, if you are going to be recommended and recommendation that can bring you out of your captivity, what can you do? With your hands, what can you do? With your cerebral faculties, what can you do? With your skills, what, I mean, with, um, with, with hands-on job, hands-on abilities, what can you do? What are you competent with? What are you competent in? Where can you be recommended? Joseph was recommended because he had skills with dreams. David was recommended because he had skills with the harp, musical instrument. He had skills as a man of war. He had skills in that the divine presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord was with him. So I ask you the question, not just in the area of your ability with football or your ability with a machine or the computer, some other 
areas of competence that can set you up for great life, great opportunities, as such things as what I call intangible assets. Are you a person of integrity? Can your integrity be spoken for? Can you be recommended on the... Do you know, even in our society today, there are a lot of competent people, but because they lack integrity, they are not people of loyalty. Many employers of labor are not keen with them. I, I saw a caption somewhere earlier today. And then this young man stood before the interview panel, and then they asked him, uh, uh, um, what can you do? What's your area of proficiency? He said, I hacked into your computer system to invite myself for this interview. <laughs> I hacked myself into your system to invite myself for this interview. I remember also sometimes ago, sometimes some months ago, early this year, I read of a man or late last year, he hacked, he hacked into the system of the United States uh, visa, uh, uh, visa, I mean, visa issuing um, organization section of the United States government, and he issued to himself visa and collected the passport data of all his friends and was issuing them visas. Issued more than twenty people visas because he had been to. So now we're not looking for. So now that is a, an area of skill, an area of competence. But such a person cannot be regarded as having integrity. The person who introduced himself to his interview panel that I had into your system to interview me, they may feel that this guy is awesome, but they will be afraid of him. He can hack into the system to increase his wages, hack into the assistant, give himself a um, housing allowance. In fact, give himself his boss's house, his boss's wife, hack into the, in the system. So what are we saying here? It's not enough to have those natural competencies intelligence business savvy quick to think quick to reason you also need those areas of competence that you can be regarded as a person of integrity a person of loyalty a person who can be dependable that your boss needs the truth in the organization he knows that oh if i lay hold on queen if i lay hold on david david i will get to the root of this matter they can vouch for you and you see Many of times, employers of labor are even beginning to regard such values, such virtues as loyalty, as faithfulness, as integrity, to, um, to put at par with all those other skill sets of competence and skill and cerebral ability. So I challenge us in this season, with the level of skill and competence already developed, I pray for someone in here. May God also set things in motion. Go ahead of you and orchestrate recommendations for you in Jesus' name. The Bible makes me to understand. He said, he said that a man who is diligent in his business, diligent with his abilities, he will stand before kings. He will not stand before mediocres. He will not stand before mere people. So I pray for someone today. May God make the arrangement. May God orchestrate things. And may God arrange things that we make people who are strategic, people who captains will listen to. Do you know a driver can recommend you even to his boss and your life will never be the same? And what you are coming to do in that organization will be far superior to even what the driver is doing. Remember how the Naaman, the leper, the Syrian war general come to receiving healing for his leprosy because a maid of his, of his wife will speak forth. He said, if only my master will go to, 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 to Samaria, there is a prophet in the land who will be able to cleanse my master of this leprosy? A maid recommended a prophet and recommended that if this captain of Syrian's army will go to the prophet by the name of Elisha, this condition of infirmity will be terminated. I pray for someone in here in this meeting. No matter your area, no matter your challenge, you feel locked down at a level. I feel there is grace on my life. I feel the anointing of Jehovah on my life to speak over situations, to speak over people in the area of your competence, in the area of your skill, in, for the integrity you carry, the loyalty you have depicted and deployed and displayed. May God arrange situations, orchestrate circumstances, that will make you to be recommended for the next level of your life. Recommended for national assignment. Recommended to be a position of influence. Recommended that you may fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Remember, Joseph's destiny was not just to function in Potiphar's house or to function interpreting other people's dreams in the prison house. Joseph, a pivotal part of Joseph's destiny, remember his dreams at the age of 17. He saw the sun, he saw the moon, he saw 11 stars bowing to him. To him. And so that means there was something about his future that would bring his parents and his siblings to bow to him and to his authority. So he knew that he was not just in Potiphar's house, I mean, for the, just to lead Potiphar's servants and Potiphar's business or in the prison house to interpret. He was taken into a foreign land to be able to preserve the Hebrew people, the Hebrew nation, that they may come into Egypt and fulfill a divine mandate. So you see Joseph there, strategically positioned with his skills, with his integrity. His skills and integrity pushed him through trials, pushed him through rough times, pushed him through challenges. But you see, eventually, the gift of a man makes room for him. What he carried made him able to fulfill his destiny, which was, he told his brothers, when his brothers were scheming in Genesis chapter 50, at the, after the death of their father, and they were telling lies, our father said, you should forget your brother's ill, I mean, ill, I mean, misdeeds towards you. He said, Am I in the place of God? You meant it for evil, but God allowed it for good, that he may use me to preserve for himself a posterity, as you see these days. So you will see here, Joseph knew that his life was not just about interpreting dreams, was about preserving a nation, was about preserving his siblings, was about preserving destiny in the greater purposes of God. I pray for someone in here again. May your competence on your job be recommended. May your competence with your skill be recommended. May your competence with your education be recommended. May your competence with your hands, your competence in interpreting other people's dreams be showing your loyalty showing your faithfulness there demonstrating integrity there may your competence in handling other people's visions other people's callings other people's ministries may your competence be recommended may you be catapulted out of this limiting level of life limiting situations of life may you be catapulted into greater purpose of God catapulted into destiny in the mighty name of Jesus may people who have benefited from you your abilities, your qualities, your character. May people who have benefited from you remember you and strategically recommend you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right? So this is one key to turning captivities, recommendation. And don't, it doesn't matter who recommends you, it matters that you are recommended. Someone lower than you are can recommend you. If you have been good to people beneath you, they will recommend you. If you have been wicked to people beneath you, they may see channels for your lifting. They may see avenues for your breakthrough, but they will not say anything about it. So it doesn't matter. You, that's why we should be careful the way we treat people. Treat people beneath us. Treat people ahead of us. People at par with us. Because you never can tell who the Lord will use. Yes, you have competencies. Yes, you have skills. Yes, you have abilities. But you never can tell. Whom the Lord, in Joseph's case, a minister of the nation was used to recommend a, a Hebrew boy, prisoner. In Naaman, the war general of Syria's case, it was a maid of his wife who recommended divine connection that made the skin of a leper to become like that of a newborn baby. So in one level, a high-ranking officer. In one level, a low-level seeming non-entity, but recommendation turn the lives of people around to these people. Hallelujah. One more here today. So in turning captivities, we recommend, I mean, we, we, we've emphasized the place of recommendation. I also like to mention, but I won't dig into that. I like to mention the place of prayers. You find yourself in captivity, be a person of prayer. The Bible makes me to understand, though we walk in the flesh, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. The Bible makes me to understand that we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We, we wrestle, but not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and might and dominion. And then you see in that place in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it says praying with all prayer and supplications, a form of prayer and watching thereunto for the saints praying with all prayer and with supplications and watching thereunto 
for all the saints. So praying can turn around captivities. If you find yourself in any form of captivity, you can take yourself to the Lord. You can turn it over to the Lord. In the level of individual prayer, you can pray for yourself for your captivity to be turned around. You can also get people to pray for you, especially believers who believe in God, who believe in his might, who believe in his power, to pray for you, to turn around that captivity. Peter, a whole apostle, was in prison, captured by the will of Herod, who saw that it pleased the nation of the Jews that Peter's colleague, James, had been killed. Then he also arrested Peter, hoping that after Easter, he will also kill Peter. But you know what? The Bible tells me in the, the, the story you find in Acts chapter 12, from verse 1 to about verse 11, verse 12, but in verse 5, he said, earnest prayers, constant prayers, was made by the church. There were the people he was leading, but he needed their prayers for his captivity to be turned around. You know, sometimes we feel, oh, only pastor can pray for the members. But sometimes members can come together. Actually, I desire, I covet that members will pray regularly, constantly for me, to help me, to position me, to make me accurate in the spirit. A whole apostle of the church, one of the vital tripods of the church, foremost in the rank of the apostles, Peter, needed the prayers of the saints young people teenagers elderly people saints that he was leading and it was their prayers that brought an angel to the prison that liberated him from the prison chains liberated him from the prison guards even when peter was being liberated you will see from verse 9 to verse 11 he said he thought as those chains were coming off and the prison gates were opening for them he thought he was in a vision he thought he was dreaming he didn't know that this deliverance was for real and this turning of captivity was because people, believers, came together and prayed for their leader. You can pray for your leader. You can pray for your national leader. You can pray for your spiritual leader. You can pray for your parents, no matter the form of captivity. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working so you can imagine when two righteous people come together in prayer three righteous people come together in prayer 50 righteous people come together in prayer you can't imagine the the explosive effect of some prayers in turning captivities in the lives of people but i'll leave that today like i said i just want to mention that i want to deal with one more key to turning captivities tonight And I call this one the decree of the watchers. I take that um, phrase from Daniel, Daniel chapter 4. The decree of the watchers. A watcher in this case is not one who watches out for a property in the natural, who is at the gate of a bank or the gate of a premise or the gate of a neighborhood. Actually, the Bible tells me when you study in Psalm 125 from verse 1, except the Lord watches over the city they labor in vain who watch over it so the lord is the main watcher the lord is the one who actually sets people to function as watchmen for him so here i'm looking i'm giving thoughts to the decree of watchers and i like to read the text that brings us that thought or that phrase here daniel chapter 4 the king over 127 nations the Babylonian Empire, the king over the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream. And look at this now, or a vision. Daniel chapter, um, chapter 4, I read from verse 13 to verse 14. And then I read verses 17 and 28. 13 to 14, 17 and 28. But it will make good reading to read the whole chapter after now. Listen to this. I saw in the visions of my head, while I was on my bed, there was a watcher. A holy one coming down from heaven so he took his authority he took high influence he took their authority from heaven from God he said coming down from heaven he cried aloud and said thus chop down the tree and cut off its branches strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches verse 17 the decision this decision to bring down this tree, to cut down the branches, he said the decision, this decision is by the decree of the watchers. That's where I got it from. By the decree of the watchers. 
and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know the living in every realm the living of diverse religious beliefs or non-beliefs for that matter he said that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whoever he will and sets over it the lowest of men verse 28 all this that is all the things nebuchadnezzar saw in his vision all this came upon king nebuchadnezzar so you see the decree of the watchers there i will explain that in a bit let me give further scriptural basis to this thought isaiah chapter 62 from verse 6 to verse 7 he said i've set watchmen or watchers on your walls O jerusalem they shall never hold their peace day or night for you who make mention of the lord so these are people that keep not keeping silence is not just going to an assembly and having an opera and shouting or doing a campaign or doing demonstration from street to street they knew where they could get the most influence that was not in the midst of men getting human attention but it was in the very courts of god in heaven that if they get attention with god they can bring his influence upon the earth and so look at this again i've set watchmen on your walls O jerusalem they shall never hold their peace day or night you who make mention of the lord do not keep silent as you make mention of the lord in making mention of the lord over the economy of the environment over your family over the nation over the herdsmen attacks over the lawlessness in the land over corruption in every sector of the society of our nation he said do not keep silent and give him that is god who when he hears and responds to you will make you an authority on the earth and give him no rest till he god walking through the watcher till he establishes until he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth who are the watchers let me quickly take us through that watchers are those who spend quality time before the lord to worship him <laughs> to seek his face to know his heart that they may represent him in the affairs of the earth again i take it again who is a watcher a watcher is one who's irrespective of age or social status it could be a housemaid it could be a driver it could be a hawker it could be a businessman it could be a politician it could be a captain of industry it could be a governor of his estate in a nation but a watcher and remember daniel was a watcher he became a president over a territory in the babylonian empire but he was a man of immense spiritual stature david was a watcher but he became a king over israel a watcher is one who spends time before the law to seek his face to worship him to know his heart that he may represent god in the sphere of influence where he has been positioned he or she has been positioned furthermore i like us to understand this watcher god has his watchers who represent him and represent his interest in every nation no matter how lawless a nation is no matter how wicked the people in a nation is god has a way of locating for himself they become the salt of that territory they become the lighthouse in that territory they become a means of divine preservation in that territory otherwise situations will have been worse lawlessness will have been worse evil will have been worse so in every nation god has a way of strategically positioning his own i have read i have seen i have talked with people who for a season of their lives god supernaturally migrated took them from the nation of their dwelling the city of their comfort took them to another location another city another nation and for the next six months they just had an unusual burden for that territory they carry the burden of that nation even more than the residents of that nation that is a watcher sent out there to to download heaven into that space i remember for several months in the course of this year i was away i was out of town i was out of the country 
and in the nation where I was, I was there for about four months, but I noticed for like the first two months, I had an unusual burden for that nation. I was just praying. I did not know the magnitude. I did not know the depth, but I just knew I carried the burden of that nation in my heart to a great extent. How God works that out, how God brings that into the natural is left to God, but I've paid a price. I've invested in that land. So you will see God has a way of raising watchers, watchers over his city, watchers over a family, watchers over an organization, watchers over a whole nation, over a whole region. God has his way of working those things. I'd like us to understand here furthermore, watchers are those people, I mean, they are people who are equipped and positioned in any territory, in any terrain to speak truth to power. To galvanize the forces of heaven upon the earth. And watchers are those who are equipped by God. Having spent time before the Lord, they are equipped and strategically, divinely positioned to speak truth to power. To influence the spiritual climate over a neighborhood, over a territory, over a people, over a culture, over a group. The way God raised Daniel for the Jews, even though he was in captivity, I mean, he was far from home, God gave him an unusual body and he was praying and God had to release a special angel, an archangel by the name of Michael to support Daniel in his bodies for the nation of Israel. You study in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 10, you see how he carried unusual body for the nation of Israel, interceded for the nation of Israel, and God started to give him great visions for the nation of Israel. That is a watcher paying a price to influence the climate over a territory. It could be in a home territory, it could be a foreign land, but God gives you a body for that territory to speak truth to power, to condition the spiritual climate over a territory. All right? So also I'd like us to understand about a watcher here. They don't easily relent in God's purpose. When God gives the body, the mantle of a watcher, the calling of a watcher, you may find yourself doing the same thing for 10 years and you don't see immediate apparent results. But you keep at it as a watcher. Noah was given a body by the Lord to begin to speak righteousness to his generation and prepare them that a day is coming that water will fall from the skies as waters of judgment and everywhere will be flooded and he was preaching to them for about 100 years god gave him that body from the age of 500 god fulfilled that prophetic word at the age of 600 for 100 years noah was building the ark as well as preaching to the people escape from the judgment that is coming the righteous judge is judging unrighteousness in his territory the earth but the people looked at him as a vain person as a dead dreamer until the water started to fall unfortunately by that time it was too late because noah had entered into that ark that boat his family who were obedient to him had entered the bible says and god locked them in so it was not noah who closed the door lest he would be able to open the door when he hears the cries of his in-laws and family and extended family members god shut them in 100 years of saying the same thing and generating no result how can a man preach for 100 years and only eight souls are recipients respondents of such a message jeremiah preached and prophesied to the nation of israel for about 40 years with no seemingly apparent results but was influencing the climate he was charging the atmosphere he will, will not relent he will keep speaking the counsels of the lord sometimes you got discouraged like you find in jeremiah chapter 20 he said i will not speak in your name anymore he said but your word was in my bones like fire and i could not resist it you are stronger than i am oh god what are we saying to us here watchers do not relent watchers keep at the divine task sometimes they don't see the immediate result sometimes it is even the generation after the watchers that see the results but they keep at it they don't relent furthermore i'd like us to understand about watchers here their time with the lord often grants them great authority to represent god and his kingdom to represent god and his government they they by reason of quality time before the lord look at the way uh, um, that lady at the dedication of jesus what's her name again is it hannah that woman elderly woman hannah for about 60 years she kept praying and praying she was a, a, a widow as a young lady she kept praying and praying for about 60 years just for one moment to see the lord's messiah 
and it seemed all the labors of 60 years was just to see the Lord's Messiah. I'm saying to us here, watchers don't relent. And because they don't relent, they are mass grace. They are mass stature. They grow into, into prominence before the Lord. And one word from a watcher can shift your life forever. And I've said all that to bring to your attention. <laughs> it, it, may God position you under a watcher. May God bring a watcher to influence your life, to influence your destiny, to influence your marriage. People who can speak one word on God's behalf. Elijah was a watcher. He watched that for God's righteousness. He watched that for God's kingdom. He watched that for God's purpose in the nation of Israel. That was why he said there will be no rain except at my word. One man who was mighty before the Lord was able to influence the climate and the produce of a whole nation for three and a half years. Why? Because he was a watcher. Watchers have stature friends. Watchers are mighty before the Lord. Watchers irrespective of their social level, financial level. Watchers because they've been with the Lord, spent time with the Lord, worship the Lord. God has rubbed off on them. They carry something. And I'd like to challenge you in closing here tonight. May you position your life. May God position your life and bring you under the influence of a watcher. One who has been with God. One who has spent time with God. One who has invested before the Lord. One in whom God has invested poured of himself into such a person because when they speak certain things those things heaven and earth may pass away but those things will not pass away that one watcher that arose came from the heavens spent time with god came to the earth one watcher spoke a word over a man who was leading an empire comprising of 127 nations it looked like one day passed one week passed one month passed but exactly one year after that pronouncement, what he said came to pass. Friends, don't toy with the waters God has set over your life. And people of influence, people of stature, people you know, they have influence in your life. And there are people who have influence with God. They spend time before the Lord. They spend time with God. Because a casual declaration over your life, you just find heaven latching on it. Heaven galvanizing it. Heaven propelling those words for performance in your life and i will close on that note tonight and i stand as a watcher here tonight to speak over lives to speak over conditions whatever has held you bound against your will you know this is not your level you know there's more to your life more to your competencies more to your skill may the lord turn you loose may the lord do a new work in your life may the lord do a new thing in your life I speak over lives on live streaming. I speak over lives here present. I speak over destinies. I speak over territories. Entire families on lockdown. Economic lockdown. Social lockdown. I speak over destinies. I speak over families. May the Lord turn you loose. May the Lord set you free. May the Lord turn around your captivity. He said when the Lord turned around the captivity, our captivity, who are like those who dream. May you feel like a dreamer. Peter, as he was coming out of prison, Acts chapter 12 against the uh, expectation of the jews and their leader herod by the decree of the church as they spoke and prayed for him peter walked out of prison he thought he was dreaming i pray for you such a miracle such an elevation such a recommendation such an establishment that will make you feel like you are dreaming about your life may god walk a miracle in your life may god turn you loose may god set you on high may god break barriers for you I speak over this city. I speak over Paracos City. Every convocation of evil, convocation of wickedness, convocation of anarchy in this land. May the breath of the Almighty tabernacle upon Paracos City. May righteousness reign in this land. May the peace of the Lord envelope this land. May the glory of the Lord break forth in this city. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to those who are connected to all the, us, those who hear us, those who are under our spiritual leadership in this house and all over the place. Newness of life, turning around of captivities, a new you for a new level, for a new level of recommendation, for a new level of promotion. Receive the grace of the Almighty. Receive power that will propel you to whole new levels. It's a new day in the precious name of Jesus. And the people say amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So get ready, friends. Captivities have been turned around. Things are shifting in the realm of the spirit. 
It's a new baptism for a new day, for a new level of life in the affairs you are surrounded with. He that told the enemy has warred, he that told the floods of hell have come, no further shall they go. Here we put a stop to their proud activities in your life. We turn you loose, fulfill your destiny, walk in the fullness of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we close with the benediction, I'd like us to honor the Lord with our substance. I'd like us to worship the Lord with our substance. Let's give willingly, cheerfully, joyfully, and probably also sacrificially to the Lord in the name of the Lord tonight. And the Lord honor us as the details of um, the platform into which we can give as we worship the Lord are projected on the screen. Let's honor the Lord with our substance and let's worship him in this moment. And the Lord respond to our worship. The Lord respond to the worship of our, with our offerings. Worship from our hearts. True worship in our lives. And may his name be exalted and glorified in the precious name of Jesus. Remember Sunday, we have two services. The first service is from 8.30 to about 9.45 and the second service is from 10 o'clock till about 11.15. All morning services, Sunday, I mean both morning services, Sunday morning. Let's look forward to that and it's going to be a glorious, glorious time in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Shall we close this meeting as we have the, take the benediction and fellowship from Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21. One, two, go. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete to do his will, walking in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the people say, Amen. Amen. <laughs>